Preparations are in full swing at Starbase for the seventh integrated flight test of Starship. As per a recent NASA document filed with the FAA, Flight 7 could occur as early as January 11th. Let's discuss the major events that took place at Starbase this past week in preparation for this historic test mission. Super Heavy Booster 14, designated for Flight 7, is undergoing final preparations in the Mega Bay. It has been outfitted with all 33 Raptor engines, and will soon be transported to the launch pad for static fire testing. Its counterpart, Starship 33, the upper stage of the rocket, has been equipped with its six Raptor engines, and is also nearing its static fire phase. Ship 33 is a milestone for SpaceX, as it represents the first Block 2 prototype, incorporating significant design improvements. These include enhanced thermal protection systems, more efficient structural designs, and optimized aerodynamic surfaces. Flight 7 will be a crucial opportunity to evaluate these upgrades in real-world conditions, providing critical data for further refinements in Starship's design. Recently, the Federal Communications Commission granted SpaceX a temporary communications license for Flight 7. This license, effective for six months starting December 14, allows communication between the rocket and ground stations during the mission. However, it's important to note that the FCC license only covers communications and does not authorize the launch itself. Final approval must come from the FAA and other U.S. regulatory agencies. Under the FAA's Commercial Space Transportation Regulations, any substantial modification to a launch vehicle or its operational procedures requires a comprehensive review. Since SpaceX is using an upgraded Starship for this mission, they are required to secure a new launch license from the FAA. Before issuing the license, the FAA conducts detailed evaluations of the vehicle's updated design, operational procedures, and risk factors to ensure the mission complies with safety and regulatory standards. The license is expected to be issued before the proposed launch date of January 11th. This past week brought a surprising glimpse into the development of SpaceX's next-generation Super Heavy boosters. A booster aft section spotted inside the Star Factory revealed design changes that deviate from the Block 1 models, suggesting that SpaceX has commenced the assembly of Block 2 boosters. Based on SpaceX's earlier graphics, Block 2 boosters are expected to be 1.3 meters taller and capable of holding an additional 350 tons of propellant, marking a significant evolution in booster design. These new boosters are speculated to incorporate Raptor V3 engines, offering a substantial increase in lift-off thrust. While not officially confirmed, Booster 18 is widely believed to be the first Block 2 variant. Beyond Block 2, SpaceX plans to introduce even taller Block 3 boosters, designed to work with larger Block 3 starships. These are expected to double the payload capacity of Block 2 and deliver over 10,000 tons of thrust at liftoff, setting a new benchmark in rocket propulsion technology. Another intriguing development at Starbase includes the appearance of a strange tube section with stringers, suspected to be the oxygen header tank for the Block 2 booster. The current generation of boosters utilizes shorter oxygen and methane header tanks to store the propellants necessary for landing burns. The design of this taller oxygen header tank, along with the possible inclusion of a taller methane header tank, indicates that SpaceX might be looking to utilize the increased propellant capacity for something innovative. One possible approach could involve sourcing propellants for the boost backburn from the header tanks instead of the main tanks. Currently, during stage separation, Propellant sloshing occurs within the booster's main tanks due to rapid changes in forces, vibrations, and the flip maneuver executed immediately afterward. Although SpaceX has added baffles to minimize the effects of sloshing inside the main tanks, this motion could still disrupt the steady flow of propellants required to reignite the engines. By using the header tanks, which remain fully filled during the boost backburn, SpaceX could eliminate the risk of sloshing and ensure a consistent and stable propellant supply. This will enhance flow stability and reduce the likelihood of engine restart failure during boost backburn. However, these remain speculative ideas, and it is yet to be confirmed if the newly spotted tube is indeed a booster oxygen header tank. I will keep you updated on this topic in future episodes as more information becomes available. It looks like a massive Gigabay building is set to be constructed at the Starbase production site. This is supported by recent clues, including a SpaceX job listing seeking a construction engineer to lead the development of the facility. Additionally, a drilling rig has been spotted near the parking garage behind the high bay, signaling the start of construction work. The exact size and scope of the Giga Bay remain unclear, but it is expected to be significantly larger than the existing high bay and mega bays. 
With the introduction of the larger Block 2 boosters in the future, the Gigabay will need to be taller than the current Megabays to accommodate these vehicles. This expansion will support the growing scale of SpaceX's operations and the increasing demands of the Starship program. Meanwhile, activities have resumed at Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex LC-39A for Starship's launch pad construction. Work on the pad had been paused after the installation of the launch tower arms in January 2023. Interestingly, in March of this year, the six orbital launch mount legs that had already been constructed were demolished. Initially, SpaceX had planned a design for LC-39A similar to Starbase Pad A, featuring a tall launch mount structure and a water deluge system beneath. However, after gathering data from earlier Starship launches, the company decided to adjust its plans. They opted for a new design that includes a flame deflector to better manage the intense heat and acoustic energy produced during launches. This change was the reason behind demolishing the launch mount legs. The design of the new launch pad at LC-39A will closely resemble Pad B currently under construction at Starbase. Recently, components for the new LC-39A Starship launch mount were spotted at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility within Kennedy Space Center. These parts are identical to those used in the assembly of the launch mount for Pad B at Starbase. We will soon see the same process unfold at Roberts Road, with the launch mount components being assembled similarly to what is happening at Starbase. Additionally, we can expect excavation work to begin at Pad 39A for the construction of the flame trench. The presence of multiple active Starship launch pads will enable more frequent and reliable launches, which are crucial for SpaceX to achieve its ambitious goals, such as supporting the Artemis missions to the Moon and ultimately advancing Mars colonization. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. ISRO successfully launched Europe's Proba 3 dual probe mission to study the Sun on December 5th, from the Sadish Dawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, aboard a PSLV rocket. Following the launch, the rocket performed its standard sequence of maneuvers and stage separation events as planned. Approximately 18 minutes after launch, the two Proba 3 spacecraft were released into a highly elliptical orbit inclined 59 degrees to the equator. This orbit has a perigee of about 600 kilometers and an apogee of roughly 60,000 kilometers. The Proba 3 mission's primary objective is to enable continuous observation of the sun's outermost layer, the corona. The solar corona exhibits extreme temperatures that can reach over 1 million kelvins, which is paradoxically hotter than the surface of the sun itself. This phenomenon remains one of solar physics' biggest mysteries. The corona is also where solar wind originates. This stream of charged particles can influence space weather significantly, affecting satellite operations and communication systems on Earth. The Proba 3 mission aims to address several key scientific questions regarding the dynamics of the corona, the sun's energy output, and uncover new insights into coronal mass ejections and solar flares, events that can have profound impacts on Earth's magnetic field, atmosphere, and space weather. Proba 3 consists of two independent, three-axis stabilized spacecraft, namely the Occulter spacecraft and the Coronagraph spacecraft, that will operate in tandem to study the sun's corona. The Occulter carries a 1.4-meter occulting disk designed to block sunlight, thereby creating a shadow for the Coronagraph spacecraft to observe the sun's corona without interference from the sun's intense light. The spacecraft will maintain a precise formation, flying at a distance of about 150 meters apart, using a combination of advanced metrology sensors, control algorithms, and autonomous onboard systems. The creation of an artificial eclipse is essential for studying the solar corona because traditional observation methods are hindered by the sun's overwhelming brightness. During natural solar eclipses, scientists can observe the corona only briefly, typically lasting just a few minutes. In contrast, Proba 3's artificial eclipse will allow for continuous observations over extended periods, up to six hours at a time. The spacecraft hosts a variety of instruments to study the sun and maintain their precise orientation in space. The data gathered is expected to enhance our understanding of solar wind dynamics and improve space weather predictions. Proba 3 is designed to last approximately two years. At the end of their operational life, both spacecraft will re-enter Earth's atmosphere and burn up. China successfully launched its new and improved Long March 12 rocket on November 30 from the Wenchang Commercial Space Launch Site on Hainan Island. The mission carried two experimental payloads, the Satellite Internet Technology Test Satellite and Technology Test Satellite 3. While specific details of the satellites were not disclosed, their primary goal is to advance satellite internet technologies, which are integral to China's plan of deploying large satellite constellations for broadband services. 
The deployment of the satellites occurred within an hour after liftoff, though no visuals or orbital parameters were provided. The Long March 12 is a two-stage rocket, 62 meters tall, and 3.8 meters in diameter, making it the first Chinese rocket of this width. This medium lift vehicle boasts a payload capacity of up to 12,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit and approximately 6,000 kilograms to sun synchronous orbit. It also accommodates larger fairings, 4.2 to 5.2 meters in diameter, a significant increase compared to its predecessors. The first stage of the Long March 12 uses four YF-100K engines, each generating a thrust of 1,250 kilonewtons. The second stage features two YF-115 engines, each producing approximately 180 kilonewtons of thrust. Both stages use RP-1 and liquid oxygen propellants, similar to the Merlin engines on SpaceX's Falcon rockets. The Long March series has been a cornerstone of China's space missions since the 1970s, evolving over time to meet the growing demands of payload capacity and mission complexity. The Long March 12, as the newest member of the series, boosts China's capabilities with its enhanced size, payload capacity, and advanced propulsion system. It will play a vital role in China's space strategy, particularly in building satellite constellations for global internet access and supporting future lunar exploration missions. This launch also marked the debut of the Wenchang Commercial Space Launch Site, China's first dedicated commercial space part. China already has four operational land-based launch sites. With the addition of Wenchang Commercial Space Launch Site, China is expanding its capabilities and enhancing its position in the global space industry. With two launch pads currently operational and plans for additional infrastructure, Wenchang is expected to handle up to 16 launches annually per pad. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.